live from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Lenovo Transform 2017. Brought to you by Lenovo. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of the Lenovo Transform event. I am your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. He is the senior analyst at Wikibon. Thanks so much, Stu. It's, it's great to always be, to be working with you here. It's great to be with you here, Rebecca, in New York City. Uh, you know, what a time it is in New York City. We are, uh, how lucky we are to be alive right now. <laughs> All right, I, 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 not, not enough I Hamilton know. humor. Uh, yeah, you know, YY, the CEO of Lenovo, got up on stage talked about how there's no better transformation story than New York City uh, from a humble trading company uh, city over 200 years ago to you know the, the center of innovation and just global commerce that, that, that it is today. So I want to ask you about YY's uh, keynote address. He was talking about how this is really an inflection point for Lenovo. He said, this is a time where we celebrate what, what we've done, the, our past, and, and, and think about the impact we've had on society and on business, and then also really look at the future and what we aspire to, what, what we, where Lenovo wants to go. I mean, where do you see Lenovo in terms of all of your coverage of these, of these companies? Yeah, so we know that we're at an interesting time in, in really what's happening in IT today. Uh, one of my favorite lines that YY had is he said, you know, you look back, you know, 100 years, he said, heck, look back 18 months and you probably couldn't predict where we would be today 18 months ago, and that's true. The, the, the pace of change is just off the charts. Uh, on the one hand, they're talking about how uh, ThinkPad uh, is now 25 years old, and the server, uh, the x86 server line also is also 25, 25 years, years ago. They're growing but, up. You, you know, I've been at a lot of events this year where you talk whether it's 10, 25, or 100 years, and they say we know we're entering a new era where everything's going to change. Lenovo feels that they are a good, really, mashup of their tradition, but they're different and they're new. And you know, one of the people in the keynote this morning said that they're you know, a startup. Now, I wouldn't call them a startup with 43 billion in revenue and 52,000 employees a globally. Um, no, um, you know, culturally, I think you and Rebe Rebecca, you'd agree with me, uh, a company of that size, um, I don't care if you started yesterday because you all got moved in, you're not a startup. There's, there's certain structure and certain things involved that make up startups and that innovation. You can't move a you know, 52,000 person company on a dime and say, oh, hey, we're just going to go uh, pivot into this. But they are looking to take advantage of uh, really that the, the whole wave of uh, AI, uh, you know, how do they uh, harness the intelligence uh, is what, what, what they talked about. So, um, and, and what they said is they don't have some of the legacy. So what that means is that while they have a server business that has been around for uh, many years, they've only had it for two years, they don't have, uh, you know, the, the, the storage, they don't have some of the baggage that, that we've been watching the industry is They're storage is trying to trans um, transform. And particularly uh, Kirk Skalkin, who we're going to have on the program later today, made that point about the lack of legacy and how that makes it easier not only to innovate, but also to sell. Yeah, absolutely. We've been watching that transformation about how software is eating the world, and Lenovo very much wants to focus on those software solutions. One of the two brand names that they put out uh, today are the Think Agile brand, and, and Think, Ag Think Agile uh, is really focused on those software-defined solutions highlighted by, uh, they've got the, the OEM of Nutanix uh, solutions, and they're also partnering with Microsoft where we're going to have Azure Stack uh, coming out later this year, and Lenovo, of course, being one of the top server manufacturers, close partnership with Microsoft, and going to drive that forward uh, for the, the really delivering on the, the, the promise of hybrid cloud solutions. So yeah, I, I want to hear what you think about these, these product announcements. This is the largest, uh, product launch in the data portfolio in Lenovo history. Yeah. Is it a game changer? So, Think System is the other big brand that they have, and it's server, storage, and network. So, they have Intel up on stage. And as a matter of fact, both Kirk and Kim Stevenson both came from Intel. So, we know Intel's place in, in the market. Uh, we understand how important they are. And with the Skylake uh, chipset coming out later this year, uh, it's important. Anytime Intel comes out with the next generation, it's important. The, the caution I have is um, 
this is, I think, the fourth or fifth show this year that theCUBE's done where Intel's up on stage talking about their next generation chipset. I was at the Google Cloud event in February. Uh, you were at the Dell EMC show in, in Las Vegas. We have the team at the HPE Discover, and all of them arm in arm with Intel talking about how this next generation is going to be transformative and of course, leveraging the data, being ready for all of those edge solutions, devices, uh, and, and really be able to take uh, that, that infrastructure and tie it to lots of different devices. Uh, but it's really that wave that Intel is, uh, the rising tide that ri rises all boats, uh, because revenue for servers actually in the first quarter this year were down a little bit, because really big companies, especially the hyperscales, are waiting for this next generation chipset. So in talking about how Intel is this great partner to, to all of these companies, what do you think sets Lenovo apart? I mean, where does it compete? What's its uh, what, what's unique about it? Yeah. So uh, Kirk in the keynote this morning laid out a couple of places uh, that that they want to really tie their brand to. Their goal is to be the most trusted to provider. Uh, in the data center today, and trust is really important. Security, absolutely, it's at the board level, it's one of the top things that everyone discusses there. Um, and when they talk about trust, it's, it starts with, with uptime. So, you know, if you start with, we're all using some of the same base, uh, base pieces, um, there shouldn't be much difference between uh, them at that point, but uh, Lenovo had some data points to show that they had the least amount of, of unplanned downtime of any of their competitors, uh, you know, going going out and saying, you know, compare them to Dell and HPE, and you know, they, they were far and away in the lead. And that is huge, particularly as you were saying, the pace of business of business change and innovation is so fast. Yeah. And, and the second piece, customer support. So you know, we, we hear lots of lip service to things like customer support. Lenovo, from a cultural standpoint, they they push it through the entire product line, and really, you get to hear also the leverage between you know, the, the PC, laptop, and, and even tablet uh, market, and, and even the device, um, all the way through the server. So, talked about how uh, when, you know, they, they bring in, you know, the sheet metals and the screws. It's, you know, you, you, you turn one way, and you go to the consumer side, you, you turn the other way in the factory, and it goes to um, the, the enterprise and the server division. And we know that there's leverage that can be made out of that. The economies of scale are good. Uh, and we, we've seen a lot of splitting of consumer and enterprise. HP uh, cut those in two. Uh, there have been rumors for years that Dell was going to uh, sell off their PC division. Uh, Lenovo feels uh, that they have the, the strength to do both of them. And as we start seeing edge solutions uh, and mobile and all these other devices play in, uh, Lenovo can build an end-to-end -end story that, that few companies still can. I want to keep, I mean, talk more about this end-to-end -end because this is this is another thing that uh, that many executives played up in the keynote. I mean, how important is that in terms of how it competes? So, so some of there are, there are some uh, pieces that, that that are easy, and you say, okay, well, from a brand standpoint, you know, if I have you know the new Moto Z. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I have a laptop that I like. You build that brand trust. You have a similar uh, user interface. Uh, we've seen what Apple and Google can do, uh, pushing out across all of those devices. So, uh, but the second one is really if we start talking about data. If I want to have insight and connectivity, uh, YY said in his keynote, uh, this fourth re revolution. Uh, is really going to be focused on the user, and therefore you want to be where the data is, where the users are, where the devices are, and Lenovo has a lot of pieces uh, that, that, that touch to those end devices. We're going to be, we're going to have a number of executives on the program too, also a customer too. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that YY was talking about is, is harnessing AI to not only understand where your customers are today, but also understand, anticipate their needs, where they want to go tomorrow. Is, is this something that you view as a strength of Lenovo? So, we're still pretty early in the AI. I feel like many many of the times here, you heard big data and AI both be, both be thrown out there. We know that there's so much data being created, especially with the peripheral proliferation of all of the end devices uh, that are there. So, how do we gather that data, turn that into insight, uh, and we're starting to, to, to see where that goes. Uh, Lenovo still primarily is an infrastructure player, so you know it's devices, it's boxes. Um, you know you want to hear more about the software uh, that helps drive that, and a lot of that is through partnerships. When I, I walked around the, the area here around me, uh, there, there are many partners here um, th th that are helping uh, 
uh, to be able to transfer that data and, and create more insight out of them. Um, so, you know, we'll see. It's, it's a lot of that is positioning where they want to be and where they know uh, that the new goal lines are. Uh, but, you know, I, I want to see some of the proof. I want to talk to customers uh, that, that are using this uh, and getting advantage from it. So much of Lenovo's strategy has really been about uh, partnering and, and forging these alliances to augment its offerings. And Kirk had said he was going to foreshadow a bit of possible mergers and acquisitions, possible, apart, possible partnerships. What do you see in store for Lenovo in terms of how it moves forward uh, in this hyper-converged world? Yeah, so in the software-defined storage space, Lenovo has a lot of partnerships. So uh, whether it's uh, Nexenta, uh, that they, 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 they resale the solution. Uh, Nutanix is, is an OEM solution. Uh, last year they had announced a deeper integration with a storage partner that was bought by one of their biggest competitors. So HPE has been acquisitive as of late. Uh, they bought both, both SimpliVity and uh, Nimble, both of which were good Lenovo partners. So uh, the question is, yeah, it's not surprising to hear Kirk say that they are going to be, be acquisitive. It's great to see him up on stage. Uh, I'm sure, you know, a question I'm going to have for him is, what do you look for? I don't expect him to come out and say, yes, this is the company I, I buy, and I'm going to spend $10 billion, uh, you know, to, to go buy a company. Um, but where are they going to fit, um, and, where, and where are they going to partner in there? Uh, just, just behind me here, uh, you've got VMware, Red Hat, Nutanix, Micron, all storage-based solutions that Lenovo can work with. Uh, Lenovo wants to be one of those platforms uh, for infrastructure and partner with companies that help round out that stack uh, and, and therefore buying software solutions that, that help augment that software-defined infrastructure uh, that Lenovo does, does would make a lot of sense. So you, you talked about some of your some burning questions you have for Kirk, but what else do you want our viewers to come away with after a day of coverage of the Lenovo Transform event? Yeah, so one of the other things that Lenovo is highlighting is what they're doing in the uh, the HPC or supercomputer market, uh, because there's a supercomputing show going on in Europe right now, uh, and Lenovo says that they now have 92 of the top 500 are running Lenovo, they're the fastest growth, but what I like to hear from him and I want to hear more of is it's not just, oh, we've got the speeds and feeds and this is great, but we're helping scientists do breakthroughs. We're helping the medical industry uh, help, help, help out find new cures uh, for diseases. We usually hear uh, you know, about CERN and what they're doing with you know, advancing science. So those are the kind of things to connect the technology to the, you know, the greater good. YY talked about it, Kirk talked about it. The greater good because infrastructure at the end of the day is only there for the applications that the business runs, and of course those applications are there to drive value to the business and hopefully for, for the greater world. Well, and that, and that is true, and that is something we've heard at, um, at a number of technology conferences, is using technology and these transformative uh, new products to make huge advancements in, in society and to solve big problems. I mean, how serious is the technology industry? I mean, is this just sort of a side note that you hear at conferences? Uh, or do you think this really is a raison d'etre of, of tech right now? Yeah, so Rebecca, you and I were at the Red Hat Summit and it felt ingrained in their culture. Um, there, there are some companies, right, you hear, you talk about it and like, oh great, you give the employees time to go work on charitable events or, uh, you know, what are you giving to schools uh, and, and helping to make things possible. So I, I'd love to hear from Lenovo, uh, really, as John Furrier would say, the meat on the bone uh, for, for some of these solutions. Uh, I, I think it is more than lip service, uh, but you know how deeply ingrained is it? We'd love to hear. The technology industry in general seems to be understanding that their mission uh, should be broader than just you know selling licenses or, or, or selling boxes. Uh, you know, as a you know, I'm a sci-fi fan, and most science fiction is about, you know, how we can take technology and, and make, you know, a, a better future. Uh, I, I have friends of mine that say, if you're a technologist, that means you're optimistic about what technology can do for the, you for the future. Uh, an area that you and I like to talk about is what will automation do to the future of jobs? So that needs to be part of the equation, because it's not just, oh, hey, we've got this cool new data center, and I can just lock it, and nobody needs to go into it. Well, what are those people doing, and what does that improve for the business and improve for the world. Right, and how will people work side by side with these technologies? How will how will their jobs be improved by the technology taking over some maybe perhaps more monotonous tasks, things like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much, Stu. I'm Rebecca Knight. We'll be back with more from Lenovo Transform just after this.